Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Imuna Project. We here at the Imuna Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to information, education, guidance, advice, and um, I'm reminded of a very profound story I recently heard about this young boy, Matisya, who everyone called him Moti. His father left, abandoned his mother and him, ran off. In time, his mother remarried after the divorce. He would quickly agree to a divorce. His wife remarried in the new... Her husband, his stepfather, didn't have any time or desire to be with uh, Moti at all. The grandmother insisted that uh, young uh, Matasyahu, young Moti, be put in a yeshiva. He should have a religious upbringing. But he was always a sad, withdrawn child, always sat at the back of the class. One day the teacher was uh, discussing the um, passage in the 45th chapter of the book of Genesis. The children of uh, Jacob show up to Pharaoh's palace and um, the prime minister, the premier, Yosef, their brother Joseph, who's in disguise, they didn't realize it was his brother yet. They were, he was their brother. They're saying, well, Benjamin should go, he should stay. No, he can't go, but if he goes, if I take him with me, my father's going to die of a broken heart. And, and it says that um, in hearing about this, about hearing about uh, how his father was so tied up in his son Benjamin that it would, um, that the separation would kill him. It said that uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph could not contain himself anymore. And he, um, he burst out, I need Joseph. I'm Joseph. Is my father still alive? And the rabbi, who was always engaging his students in conversation and questions and answers, um, gives a question that, that I certainly would have given. For the last however many paragraphs, they've been talking about, well, you know, Benjamin's going to be hard on my father, my father's going to be this, my father this, my father that, we can't do this because of my father. What's Joseph saying is my father's still alive? It's obvious he's still alive. They've been talking about him. Can anyone under, uh, understand, can anyone uh, explain this posuk? What's the meaning for this, 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 this verse? The students had no answer from the back of the class. A little hand raises. Belongs to Moti, Motisya. He's never before answered a question, never said anything. He just sat sad at the back of the class. And the rabbi, the teacher, says, yes. What's Yahoo? Do you, do you have do you have something to say? And Moti says, Yes, I, I think I have an explanation. The teacher says, Well, please, please share it with us. Why does he say, Is my father still alive? And little Moti says, He says, Is my father still alive. He didn't say, is your father still alive? My father. Is he still my father? Does he think of me? Does he worry about me? Does he care about me? Does he, after all these years of separation, am I still in his heart? Is he still my father? That is what I think is the meaning of this uh, his verse. Is my father still alive? Is he still my father? Tears welled up in the teacher's eyes. As you realize that the little boy is, is, is trying to explain uh, the verse, but in actual fact, he's describing his own life. His father who abandoned him and his mother, whose Heaven knows where. Is he still my father? 
Does he think of me? Does he give me a second thought? Does he worry about me? Does he think about how I am, how I'm doing? Is he, is he still my father? Is my father still alive? It doesn't matter whether or not Moti's answer was in fact the true meaning of Joseph's question. The message should be very clear and thought-provoking. Children have feelings. They have sensitivities. They may not readily express themselves, but their eyes, their actions, their inactions often tell the story. A perceptive parent, a perceptive teacher can look at a child and sense the hurt, sense the pain, feel his grief, hopefully reach out to the child in, with gentleness and compassion. When that happens, then the true nature of the quiet, sad child can, um, can begin to shine. The frightening aspect of the situation is what does or does not happen to those children whom no one notices. The young child, quiet and sad, the young girl at the back of the class with no friends, no one's talks to, withdrawn. Those ones no one notices, even the parent, even the teacher. Let's notice the quiet ones. Let's notice the sad ones. Let's feel their pain, their grief, their sorrow, why they're withdrawn. Let's reach out to them. They're children. They need us. We're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Immuno Project, I'm Daniil, and thank you so much.